so today uh, I'm going to uh, share my our recent uh, work, and this is joint work with um, Yunqi, Yubo, Zhihuan, Jing Zhao, and this work is about how to elicit thinking hierarchy from people. So uh, let me start by asking the audience a question. So we have two circles, a smaller one and a larger one. The, the radius of the slum, uh, smaller one is uh, one third of the radius of the larger one. And the smaller one rolls around the large one, one trip back to its starting point. And how many times the smaller one revolve in total? Um, is there any feedback from the chat? <laughs> okay, if anyone, if anyone has uh, any, uh, any answers, please you can take it or just raise the hand if you want to answer. Uh, I, I, I can't say so fast for speaking answering this question, but uh, if anyone has the answer, so go ahead. Yeah. yeah, the audience may be surprised to be asked this mass question during a talk. Is there any answer? Yes, okay, we have one answer in chat, three. Three, yeah, great, that's the answer yeah. I need. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, so I uh, we actually ask uh, a lot of Peking University students and this is the answers we get. So we have, yeah, the three is actually the plurality answer. 100, uh, approximately 140 people, students answer three. And there is also some uh, answer like one, two, four, six, and nine. And you, you may notice that the three is basically the ratio between the two radius. And the point is that the correct answer is four. And I won't uh, explain why the correct answer is four because this is not the main point of this talk. My point is that only 16 people answer the correct answer. And how can we know that? How can we identify the correct answer when majority is wrong? And this is the uh, uh, purpose of our research. And uh, this actually studied by um, uh, some of the previous work. And the, the question we, we focused is like, how can we elicit the hierarchy among the answers? where the higher ranking answer may not be supported by the majority, but from more sophisticated people. And the previous one, this math problem, we can see that actually the majority of people make a mistake and only 16 people get it correct. And it can be also be applicable to other scenarios, like maybe we ask people's opinions about the philosophy question. And sometimes maybe the majority, they, they do not provide a very um, sophisticated answer, and the problem is how we identify this situation. And the idea we have is like um, regarding that math problem. So the people who answer four, they know other people can answer three because three is like it's very intuitive answer. But for the people who answer three, it, it's hard. It's difficult for you to know that some people can answer four. And this asymmetry is the thing we use to build our model. So here we assume that people they actually have uh, this kind of thinking web. So we, we use the terminology thinking web because it is like a foot web. So basically we, th we, we kind of think like people they have different levels of case, uh, sophistications. And the point is that we think the higher level uh, people, they can actually predict the lower level people thinking, but not vice versa. And this, this theory is actually, uh, if you're familiar with some behavioral econ stuff, is, is kind of similar to the bounded rationality theory, but uh, different in this, the, in this situation. And it's also, I think it's a, a famous book called uh, Thinking Fast Slow. And that book assumes, uh, uh, like hypothesis that people, they have different thinking system, a fast thinking system and a slow thinking system. And the, the point of our research is we assume that there is this hierarchy relationship be between this system. And this is how we use this relationship to identify the hierarchy. So, okay, so the question is how we estimate, how we infer this thinking web without any prior 
it's like if if like um if we have the prior, we definitely know that which answer is the correct answer, which answer is not. But the problem is that in many situations, especially for some uh, field that is very new, and for some uh, like people have very uh, many different opinions. In that case, we actually have very limited prior to know that who is the expert, who is not. And this is the situation this work uh, focuses. Okay, so uh, go back to that math problem. So we ask the student this math problem, we ask them their answer, and this is an open response question. So it, we, we do not provide them any options. So they just like, they can answer whatever they want to answer. And the point is, we also ask them, what is your prediction for other people's answer? And in such case, they can actually provide multiple predictions. So for example, for this math problem, like maybe some students they answer four and they predict that other people can answer one, two, three, and they just list one, two, three in this second uh, plan. And so this is the main trick of this um, survey is that we get a matrix and we call this answer guess, answer prediction matrix. So this matrix actually records how many people answer this answer and predict other people are gonna answer that answer. So this is actually the real data for that math problem. Um, so we actually have um, 100 and so, so the diagonal elements represents how many people answer the answer. So we have 11 students answer one, eight students answer two, 134 students answer three and 16 students answer four, which is the correct answer, but we don't know now. And the point is for the non-diagonal parts, so it actually means like the three, uh, sorry, not the 13 there, it means that certain people, they answer six and they predict that other people are gonna answer three. And for that, um, for that maybe like the 11 above that 13 means that 11 people, they answer four and they predict that other people can answer three. So this is, uh, this is a technical part of this. So any question here? Okay. So we will rearrange after we get people's answers and people's um, predictions for other people's answer, we, we get this matrix. And then we're gonna re rearrange the rows and the columns together to maximize the sum of the upper triangular, the upper triangular area. Okay, so the intuition behind this algorithm is that because we assume that the higher level people they know what lower uh, what uh, the thinking uh, they can predict uh, the opinions of the lower level uh, people. So in that case, so if these um, answers are actually arranged in a perfect uh, order, in that case we are only there. There are going to only be positive elements in the upper triangular area. So that is how why we use this algorithm. And this is the third version of that math problem. So we can see that although the answer four is only supported by 16 people, but it is the top ranking answer in our algorithm because among the 16 people, 11 people know that other people can answer three. But among the 134 students who answer three, only four of them predict other people answer four. So this is why we put the four as a top ranking answer. And it also actually gives the hierarchy of all uh, among all the answers, which is four, two, three, six, nine, and one. And four is a correct answer. So the point is that our algorithm can identify this correct answer only uh, like uh, even is only supported by 16 people, a very few people, and also provides you the hierarchy. And the point is that implementation of this algorithm doesn't require any prior knowledge about the problem. We just get the matrix from people's reports and we rearrange the rows of column based on this, this rule. And we actually get this directly exactly graph. So uh, I may just like skip this part because this is 
uh, technical. And okay, so this is the, uh, the, the full paradigm of this survey. So we ask people, what's your answer? What's the prediction for other people's answer? We get the matrix. We use the algorithm to, st to store the answers. And then we get this hierarchy. We get this directed graph to represent uh, people's hierarchy. And we actually run this paradigm um, for uh, studies. And we ask the students some uh, um, elementary school Olympic math problems. We ask them some goal. Goal means a board game goal. And we also ask them uh, some general knowledge problem and also the pronunciation of the Chinese characters. And we can see that in all the studies, uh, our algorithm, so this, this, the, this table actually represents the number of questions we get correct. So in all the studies, we beat the plurality vote, especially for the study for goal. So in the goal study, it's like um, we have 30 problems and our algorithm actually gets 28 of them correct. Why the plurality vote only get uh, can I say this maybe yeah twenty three okay okay so that is another um question so uh, maybe some of you are familiar with this but some of you are not it's just uh, called Monty Hall problem and um so basically there are three doors. And there is only a one, the prize is only behind one door and for another two doors, there is some like uh, goals behind them. And you make a choice and then the host gonna <laughs> like open another for the rest of the two doors, the host gonna open one door and tell you there is a goal, goal behind it, there's no prize. And then ask you, do you want to switch and and this is a very uh, famous interview question. And the correct answer is two thirds. And but many people answer 0.5 here. And we can see that in uh, using our algorithm. So if we use plurality vote, we're gonna aggregate the answer to half, which is not the correct answer. But if we, if you use our algorithm, you're gonna get the top ranking answer being two thirds, which is the correct answer. And the reason our algorithm put these two thirds as the top ranking because among the 34 students who answered two thirds, 26 of them predict other people gonna answer 0.5. But among the 35 students who, who answer half, only one of them predict other people gonna answer two thirds. So this is like we get this hierarchy again. And this is another famous problem actually from that book, Thinking Fast Slow. So um, um, in the city, 85% uh, of the taxis are green, the others are blue. And a witness sees a blue taxi and she is usually correct with probability 80%. Uh, percent. And what is the probability the taxi is blue? And for this, I mean, it is like uh, it is like in another like hospital example. It's like there is a device can tell you whether you whether you have a disease, and this device is cracked with eighty uh, with eighty percent probability. And this device says that yes, you have that disease. And what is the probability you really have that disease? So this is uh, this this version and. Um, 80 people answer 80%, which is the intuitive answer. And the correct answer is 41%. You, you need to carefully get it by some Bayesian rule. And, and the point is that there are also several other uh, answers, like 12 and 15 and 20. It's actually very surprised to me and at first. And, and the thing is, we collect all of these answers and also uh, present this hierarchy and put the correct answer 41 in the top ranking. And the interesting thing is that the most sophisticated answer, 41, is answered by 16 people. And among these 16 people, none of them know that some people can, can answer 12, 15, or 20. But for the people who answer 80%, and like many of them know that other people can answer. So I mean, the, the, the message from this is like sometimes the most sophisticated level, 
they cannot predict the opinions of the least sophisticated level. But for the middle sophisticated level people, they can actually predict the opinions of the least sophisticated. So this is kind of like phenomenon we, we actually observe not only in this question, but also in many other questions we ask. Okay. Um, so how many minutes do I have? You have uh, another 11 minutes. 11 minutes, okay, good. So yeah, so, um, so for this boundary river question, we ask people like, what is boundary river between China and North Korea, and I think like every Chinese knows that the the, the answer is actually uh, Yalu Jiang is the Yalu River. And we asked the students this question, and we find that three students they actually provide two answers, and which is um, Yalu River and Duman River, and they also predict that other people are going to only pr provide when a single answer. And it turns out these three students are correct. Both of the rivers are the boundary river between China and North Korea. And we can see like, even though like only three people get this question correct and we, don't, we do not have any prior, we can still identify these three people. And also knowing that there is a hierarchy among these answers. So I'm going to skip this one and, and also this one. So uh, I think uh, one thing I want to talk about is when is our algorithm wrong? So our algorithm wrong is that when people can easily guess each other's answer. And this, is, this happens when we ask some people something about the, 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 some dynasty problems in China. And, and in that case, um, actually like people, they can easily predict what other people are gonna answer even though they actually don't know what is the correct answer. It's, it's like in the, 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 the real life, like when people agree to disagree, they perfectly know other people's opinion, but they still stick to their own opinions. In that case, there is no hierarchy. And our algorithm also cannot provide you uh, a good hierarchy there and the top ranking answer may not be the correct answer. And we also provide so that is why we provide a measure to measure the hierarchy uh, for the feedback we collect. And we actually find that if, the, if the, the, the matrix is more hierarchical, our algorithm is more accurate. So basically our, our algorithm, our method is applicable in the scenario where people actually do have a very clear hierarchy structure. Okay, so since I only get this, so let me ask you the last question I want to ask is like, why a bar chairs high? Can I get feedback from the audience? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's ask. This is the open question. So if someone wants to answer once again the same, uh, you can text in a chat box or just raise the hand and uh, open your mic and answer. Uh, do you want to answer this question? Uh, do you have any? Uh, no one, no one has. And Fergus, begin. Uh, uh, I don't know. I wanted to give some sort of intuitive answer. Um, okay, the first that comes to my mind, maybe that, like the, the, if someone is uh, uh, short, then this person, in case uh, of uh, the bar chair is high, then it wouldn't feel uh, embarrassed and feel more comfortable uh, sitting you know, on the bar chair. That, that's the first that comes to my mind. I see. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So we we actually ask uh, uh, several students at Peking University, and the, the priority answer Z. You actually provide a surprise answer to me, actually. So the priority answer Z provide is the because the 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 uh, by country is high, and that, that is why the chair is high, and and. We also like they, are, they also provide many other answers, and we use our algorithm. We ask them like, what is your prediction for other people's opinions, and we use our algorithm to get the hierarchy. And the top ranking answer is that 
if the bar chairs is high, then you can have a better eye contact with people who stand. So this is the top ranking answer. So the point is for this question is like, I want to say like our, the, the idea of our mechanism is not only, it's, it's not only applicable to this math problem or goal problem. We also want to apply it to this kind of open response problem. And we want to elicit people's opinions. And in that case, we can actually use this one to get a hierarchy where, again, not the polarity answer being the top ranking. And, and there is also many future work we want to discuss. It's like, um, I, I think uh, many of you are not familiar with this area, but um, I think a, a natural um, a extension of this is like we, for all the studies we perform, we just pay people, we just use flat payment. So no matter what they provide, even they provide, I don't know, they're gonna be paid equally. And if we can design a different reward, how can we incentivize them to provide their opinions and predictions for other people's opinions? That's a natural extension. And also it's like for the bar chairs case, um, one tricky thing here is that um, if people they actually provide their open response answer, we need to actually cluster, classify their answers at first to run our algorithm. And we right now we can only do it by hand. And it is not like the math problem. We can easily classify because I mean it's like 0.5 equals half. They are just like different representation for the same answer. It's very easy to, to run the algorithm automatically there. But for the opinion question, is a little bit tricky here. So that is another thing we want to. And also we want to um, apply this. So the reason we choose like the mass goal problems in our study, because these are all the questions with ground truth. And that is why we can validate our answer to compare whether the top ranking answer of our algorithm, it is a correct answer. But we will also want to apply it to like, I say like, we want to ask people, we want to elicit people's opinion about some philosophy question. And in that case, um, we can run our algorithm, but the tricky part is how can we know that our, our algorithm actually provides you a better hierarchy than just using plurality votes, like which one is which opinion is more popular, and how to actually evaluate our algorithm in that subjective area. I think this is another challenge um, we want to consider. Okay, and that's a uh, talk. Thanks. <laughs>